Welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to take what we reviewed about our inverse trig functions and use those inverse trig functions now to find angles in our right triangles. And we're going to do this by doing a couple of examples. So let's say we have an example like this where we're asked to find theta. Now how are we going to find theta? Well first, um, by using SOHCAHTOA, notice that I'm given information about the opposite and the hypotenuse. Now I could use that information to find the adjacent side, but uh, why create more work for us? I know that I already have a function that uses opposite and hypotenuse, and here I'm going to get that sine of theta, which I know is opposite over hypotenuse, or 10 over 50, is going to be 1 fifth. Now if sine of theta equals 1 fifth, then by the definition of our inverse trig functions, that means that sine inverse of 1 fifth is equal to theta. Okay. Now, sine inverse of 1 fifth equals theta. Now, keep in mind, uh, whatever mode your calculator is in, degree mode or radian mode, that's the answer that you're going to get here for theta. So let's just say my calculator's in degree mode. I'm going to plug in sine inverse of 1 fifth. I'm going to get that theta is about equal to 11.5 degrees. And of course, if I need an answer in radians, I would just switch that over to radian mode, plug in the exact same thing, and it would pop out a theta in radians. Okay, so this is the basic idea that we're going to be using. Now let's look at a couple more detailed problems. A lighthouse is located on an island that is two miles off a straight shoreline. Express the angle formed by the beam of light and the shoreline in terms of the distance d in the figure. So we have this figure given, this distance d is a distance along the shoreline. The lighthouse is two miles away from the shoreline. So we can fill in this information here that's given in the problem. Now looking here, if this is my angle theta, if I'm going straight from the lighthouse to the shoreline, that's going to form a right angle. And with respect to this angle theta, I have an adjacent side and I have an opposite side, don't I? So we know we're going to be using tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to my opposite side, which is 2, over my adjacent side, which is d. Now the question is saying, express the angle formed by the beam of light in terms of the distance d. So what I need on the left hand side is just theta and on the right hand side I need an algebraic expression that contains d. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take tangent inverse of both sides of this equation. So I get that tangent inverse of tangent theta is equal to tangent inverse of 2 over d Now, recall that the restricted domain of tangent is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, isn't it? Um, but the range, or sorry, the domain of tangent inverse is anything. So the question is, can I use my cancellation law here? So let's think of what that means. If I need theta to be between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, that's the same as between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees in order for me to be able to cancel these two out. But looking at my triangle, I already have a right angle, which is not theta, so the most that theta could be is 89 degrees for this to be a triangle, right? If theta was 90 degrees, I wouldn't have a triangle, really. Um, so at most, this theta is going to be 89 degrees, so I'm within my boundaries. I'm where I need to be to be able to just cancel these out with our cancellation law and I get that theta is equal to tangent inverse of 2 over d and again tangent inverse is defined everywhere so tangent inverse of 2 over d is going to give me some value between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and that's what my theta is going to be so we finish the problem We've expressed the angle formed by the beam of light and shoreline in terms of the distance d. This is exactly what we've done. We have angle equals some expression of d. Okay. Let's take a look at one more of these type of problems. An observer views a launching space shuttle from a distance of two miles from the launch pad. We want to a express the height of the space shuttle as a function of the angle of elevation theta 
and b, we want to express the angle of elevation theta as a function of the height h of the space shuttle. So first we have this space shuttle, uh, it's a little rocket, it's blasting off, and here's the launch pad that it just blasted off from. We have an observer that is two miles from the space shuttle, and he has, we're talking about the angle of elevation to the top of the space shuttle, and just to draw this in here, this is going to be the H that we're talking about later. My observer's over here, so he's two miles from the space shuttle. And the angle of elevation uh, that we need in this first one is going to be this angle here, isn't it? This is theta. So for part A, we want to express the height of the space shuttle as a function of the angle of elevation theta. So noticing that I have theta, I have a right angle here and I have h and 2. With respect to theta, h is my opposite and 2 is my adjacent, so I get that tangent of theta is equal to h over 2, and multiplying both sides by 2, I get that h is equal to 2 tangent of theta. And we're done. That's it. That's all we need for part A. We've expressed the height in terms of uh, we've expressed the height as a function of the angle of elevation theta. Now for part B, we want to do the exact opposite. I want to express the angle of elevation theta as a function of the height h of the space shuttle. So I'm going to start from here again. We'll pull this down here. I have that tangent of theta equals h over 2. Now taking inverse tangent of both sides, tangent inverse of tangent theta is equal to tangent inverse of h over 2 and just again to make sure we can use our cancellation law looking at this triangle I already have a right angle in this bottom right corner so that means that theta at at the least is 1 degree and at the most is 90 degrees. So we're within our domain, our restricted domain for tangent. We can go ahead and just cancel out this tangent inverse and tangent and we get that theta is equal to tangent inverse of h over 2. Alright, now we're going to do some other examples um, with expressions of these inverse trig functions in the next video and that will finish up this section. We'll see you there.